Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Making a Game in the Desmos Graphing Calculator series. Last time we covered developing level 1 of our game. In this video, I'll cover creating levels 2 and 3. I'm gonna be honest, I don't have a lot of new stuff to say for this video. I already covered the majority of the stuff I used to create levels 2 and 3, so now I just need to implement it all. If I'm not covering anything major though, why am I making this video, and why should you watch it? Well, the little things that I was wrong about or did in an inefficient way in the past, I have the opportunity to correct now. I find it interesting to fix or even redevelop designs that seemed good in a vacuum, but, no pun intended, suck in the full design. Okay, maybe that was intended. So without further ado, here's four and a half hours of footage compressed into two minutes for your enjoyment. Afterwards, I'll talk about the challenges I faced and how I either overcame them, or I'm leaving them for later to fix. quick to develop as well. I'll begin by talking about level 2's challenges. The beginning of level 2 is super easy to make with this simple rolling enemy. This line is what I need to draw the enemy, and this one is for collision detection. This guy was the hardest to make on level 2. The shooting enemy I think is a very important enemy to add as he's a unique challenge for the player, but adding him in is like adding three separate enemies in. I covered the shooting enemy in my video on screen now, and it didn't change him all that much. The only difference I made is that he moves faster in the final game than he does in the demo. The issue is that so much time passed since I made him, I kind of forgot how to recreate him. After some relearning though, I managed to add him and both the bullets in. Here you can see all the equations for the shooting enemy and the bullets. Now we get to the easy part of the level. First, I place two jumping enemies. You can see that they jump slightly out of sync in order to give the illusion that one is lagging behind the other. I won't cover them too much more though since that was the only special thing about them. The last part of the level involves this little ceiling area. I'm drawing the shape with a polygon tool. It has no collision, so it's purely aesthetic. Two smashing enemies are placed under it so that the player must jump over the first one and lunge under the second. To get the coin, you must jump over the second smashing enemy instead of lunging under it. Honestly, I don't even know if it's possible to get over it. If it's impossible, I'll move the coin, but for now I'm just going to leave it there and see what happens. And that was level 2. The majority of my time, however, was not spent on level 2. It was spent on level 3. I realized that I only made about half the terrain mechanics that I needed to during my terrain mechanics video, so I needed to create the full design here. Here's the demo I made in the terrain mechanics video. It has a few issues. Number one, the player will race up it at lower angles. This just makes no sense in the context of literally anything else in the game. Number two, the player will jump once he reaches the top. This issue, I'll get into a little bit more why it happens later, but you can see it looks a little strange. And finally three, the starting point of the ramp is unknown. This is kind of an issue when I want to figure out where I need to place the enemies in the flag, so I do need to figure out exactly where that ramp is. Fixing these problems was tantamount to the success of my level, so I began addressing them. To fix the inconsistent climbing speed, I created a slope that I liked and then solved for the X and Y components of velocity that I need to keep the player traveling at 10 units per second. This was these insanely long equations that you saw earlier. They're both really just made out of three stupid equations smashed together. 
The D controls the X offset and the V controls the Y offset. I chose those variable names for no other reason than they were available. To fix the jump at the end of the slope, well, I didn't. This was clearly going to be a difficult problem to solve, and it's not breaking the game, so it's getting pushed to the back burner for now. Lastly, to find the starting point of the ramp, I made this equation. I'd explain what it all means, but it's just too complex to convey in this quick video. So just take it on faith that this equation gave me the starting point of the ramp. The enemies on the slope were simple enough. All I had to do was add in the vertical and horizontal offsets to have them move with the slope. Besides that, nothing was different with them though. And that was level 3. This level might be the hardest one to create, just because of the terrain mechanics. It looks pretty simple, but it was a bear to tune under the hood. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss me creating the last few sections of the game. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time!